low quality fans of a high quality Bruins team. That is the Bruins season. It's over, man. It's over. I can't, I don't have it in me for a skit. I know. Uh, I just, I just don't have it. I just, I should have recorded a couple of them this morning. I just don't have it. I don't have it in me. This is tough. And you know, well, first things first. First things first. To the Canes. And the Canes fans. GG's. Hell of a series. Good game. Uh, I'm actually genuinely rooting for you over uh, either Pittsburgh or New York. So there's that. I mean, there is a track for me to be rooting for you all the way till the cup final. Probably not in the cup final, but depending on who you match up against. You got some great players, great young players. You got a complete piece of shit on your team. I really think you should do something about that. But hey, you, you guys do you. But GG's. Have a little respect, right? We just got to have a little respect. That being said, we were the underdogs in this game. In this series, we were the underdogs. And it played out that way. The first thing I want to address is a lot of people are talking about the lack of effort in this game. I just didn't see it that way. I saw the same problem with three other away games where we couldn't win our matchups. And this is the best game, I would argue, that Ber the Bergeron line has had against the Stahl line as far as the away games go. It was the best game. And we just did not get anything from the bottom six. We were the underdogs for a reason coming into this game. We were not chosen by a lot of, of people to win this series. And it played out that way. But I thought we fought every time we went down. Starting the series down two games. And a lot of us at that point didn't think we'd even make it to game six. Uh, losing game five and then forcing game seven. I mean, you got to be proud of this team in, in certain regards. I'm not sitting here accepting failure, accepting losses. Like that, this is professional hockey, man. Like good teams lose against good teams. That happens. It's just frustrating. It's frustrating. It's hard. Uh, Ranta, we never even saw their starting goaltender. Ranta was a net for this one. Swayman and net on our side. I thought Ranta played really well. I thought Swayman couldn't do shit about really any of the goals against him. No line changes. We left Frederick in, which I thought was a mistake. I said it on the short shift pod, uh, which was brutal. Just brutal. Uh, he did not have a good game. He didn't play almost almost 12 minutes straight. He didn't play. We're going to talk about the game. We're going to have a lot of discussions in the offseason. We're going to have some tough videos to start the offseason. But Discord, please join. The link is below. And toss out some ideas for what you guys would like to see. Or you can put it in the YouTube comments, of course. What you guys would like to see as far as offseason videos. I have my ideas. Season grades is going to come out. Um, well, I'm either going to do it next week. Or we're going to wait till the end of the playoffs. I'm not sure yet for the season grades. The goal is to have a episode drop once a week and schedule it for one day. I'd like to do more. Um, after seven months, eight months of a season and doing three to four videos a week, I do need this couple of months to, to have a couple of my nights free. But I do want your take on what you'd like to see me talk about. Um, I'd, I'd love some more ideas. I, some of you guys have some really clever, crazy, hey, what about this kind of stuff that I, I've always been fascinated when, when a different mind thinks up something like that. So definitely join the Discord and put them in there or put them in the YouTube comments below. This was, I mean, not to spoil the season grades because I don't know what his grade is yet, but talk about a nightmare series for the Sweeney design. Just a nightmare, man. It's, it's, we were a one-line team again. A one-line team plus coil. <laughs> I, 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 can't, I can't believe that we're ending the season feeling this way. The offseason last year, we signed Nosek. We signed Felino, And I'm sitting there going, this is great. Like Lazar, obviously, we've, we've got from the trade halfway through the season last year. 
I really thought our bottom six was improved. Like we had more. And no, we didn't. We didn't. And even some analytics guys tried to tell me, like, no, they're not actually. You haven't seen enough of them. I was always a big no-sick guy. I mean, obviously, you like the Felino signing. And then nothing. Felino ended up being my least favorite Bruin of the season. Like, if you take across the entire season, just a conti- continuous just decline of opinion of the guy. Not him as a person, obviously, but, but his performance on the ice. Uh, it's a nightmare series. Even in seven games, even forcing at game seven, you just didn't get anything from the bottom nine. You got a little bit from the second line varying. You like our defense. You really do. Forba Clifton, I thought, had a really good season, a good, really good series for what we expected. But you like our defense for the most part. The Grizz factor, though, is scary. What do we do there? We had to bench him. And we looked better without him. Something I didn't think I'd talk about. I mean, maybe it was just a bad matchup. I'm, I'm kind of rambling here. I'm kind of getting some thoughts out. I, I've got to get this more structured. We're going to talk about all this stuff in the offseason, and these conversations are going to happen early. I'm not even going to touch the Bergeron subject at the moment because I can't handle that right now. I'm disappointed, and I know you guys are too. There's a lot, there's a lot to just go, you know, I love this team, and we had a really tough, tough opponent. This is a close series, and we could have been talking about something different. We could have been talking about something different. We got one bounce. It feels like we got one bounce this whole game, and it came with 20 seconds left. It really feels like that. The refs let them play kind of once Carolina got the lead, but still, the refs let them play for two periods, which I'm going to be honest is what I wanted. I wanted the refs to swallow the whistles. Um, I didn't expect them to swallow it to the level of Oh my God, the third period was egregious. And let me be clear, they didn't call anything on anyone. The only call they made in the last 40 minutes of the game was one they didn't have a choice. So, I... Look, it favored the team in the lead, sure. The Canes already had the matchup advantage and whatnot, but you want to talk about missed calls? There were missed calls all over the place. All over the place. I prefer that to the first period where they called a bunch of crap on us and not them. The only frustrating part about the referees to me tonight, really, because if you're going to let them play, at least let them all play, and that's what they did for 40 minutes. But the first period was very lopsided refereeing. But look, that's that's home ice advantage. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? But let's talk about this game. Puck drops! The first thing we're actually going to talk about is refereeing in sort of a, a weird way. Five minutes in, and we get spicy immediately. Freddie back checks, takes Domi away from what was basically an open net he had all the top of the net to work with just completely wrecks him prevents the scoring chance huge play by freddy the best play he had in this game massive right there but on the ensuing play smith lays a big hit on tony d they're gonna call roughing this was it's really funny because when you compare this hit to say the 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 pasta getting elbowed and 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 the mcavoy slew foot and the the, the various other calls that were missed later in the game, it uh, <laughs> really surprised it got called. But what's interesting about that is Trochik completely loses his mind and goes and smacks at Slash and Smith, offsetting penalties now, which was huge in the moment. It's going to 4v4 for two minutes rather than us going down on the penalty kill. That, that's Look, early in the game, it's exactly what you want to see from a Bruins fan perspective. We are still going to be the first team to go on the penalty kill, though. Eight minutes in, Forbort holding on Kotkin Yemi as he tries to go by him. Two things can be true. This was a holding call. This was an absolute holding on Forbort. And Kotkin Yemi's a diver. That's just true. There are really two players I dislike on the Canes. Tony D'Angelo, because he's a piece of shit human. That's not... I don't know what the argument is there. And then Kotkin Yemi, who I didn't think we'd be having this conversation... He dove all series. He's a diver. And Svechnikov goes down really easy, but he plays really heavy. So that kind of offsets for me. But Kotkaniemi is a straight-up diver. Anyway, we're going to go to the penalty kill. We kill it. 9.30 left. Ranta makes the biggest save he has to make for the first, I don't know, 45 minutes. Really the biggest game-changer for him. It is a cross-crease pass. And he slides across, I believe it's Howler to Hall, slides across, gets the pad on it, prevents the scoring chance. This close to scoring first. Did not get it. 20 seconds later, Clifton 
trips Svechnikov again. Oh, goes down real easy. But Pesci's going to go for high sticking on the same play. Those are going to be offsetting. We're going to go to 4v4. And then 3.30 left. Hall tripped into the boards. And then two seconds later, Howla cross check from behind into the boards. No call on either of them. Oh, it was so infuriating for this first period. I know I should swallow the whistles, but we've already been on the penalty kill. And they're already calling soft stuff on us. Ah, oh, that was so frustrating. But again, it's home ice advantage. It's part of something that you deal with in this. We finally get a lucky call, though. It's about a minute and a half left in the period. We, we, we iced the puck. And they waved it off, saying maybe he had a chance to catch up to it. They wave off the icing. And I was like, hey, a call that went our way. And in classic hockey god style, the puck gets flung back up the ice. Transition into the zone. Trocek loops around the back of the net. Fires the puck up to Slavin on the left point, And we are completely collapsed in front of Swayman. And Slavin has all of this room and time Everyone freaks out and takes a step forward towards Slavin, realizing no one's covering him at all. And in that motion, it opens up a lane to, I believe, who was it in here? Is it Domi? I believe it's Domi next to Swayman, far side, diagonal across the, the crease, the slot, I should say. He fires it hard. Domi puts it on net or into the slot. I couldn't tell if he was trying to shoot this against Swayman, but it bounces off a couple people, and it's just a wide open tap in for Tara Vinen, who gets the first goal of the game once again for the sixth time this series the Canes get the first goal 124 left in the first period heartbreaking even more heartbreaking 30 seconds later Tony D is giving it to Hall in front of the net kind of getting with it getting him in the chest a couple times Hall might be taller than Tony D'Angelo Tony D'Angelo might be a small little peasant I don't know Hall cross checks him in the mouth you can't argue with this call Tony D is bleeding because he got cross-checked in the mouth. Hall has to be more disciplined than that. It's a four-minute double minor. This, in my head, was a good thing or a bad thing. This was a double-edged sword. You kill this off, and even though you're down a goal, you've just bumped up momentum a little bit. You've gotten your team going. We do kill it off. Three minutes and three seconds or so of the second period are on that penalty kill. and We kill it. But then the unforgivable happens. We kill it while it's in our zone. But they keep the puck for another 10, 15 seconds cycling it around. And there's a shot from the left point and Lindholm deflects it. He gets a stick on it. Gets it away from Swayman. I don't know why this is unforgivable. Oh wait, I do. McAvoy is puck watching. Deflects past McAvoy. To Domi, who has a wide open side of the net because no one can react to the bounce fast enough. It's a perfect bounce for the Canes. The Canes had everything working for him in this game. We did not get a good fucking bounce on any of this shit. Bounces toward the Canes. Domi buries it. McAvoy should have had a stick on him. Should have had a body or something. But here we are in a 2-0 hole, but four minutes in, three minutes in, to the second period. Brutal. We have to get one back. And it's our hero, Jake DeBrusque. Who does it for us? We're about five minutes into the period. And it's a turnover by stall in the neutral zone. We're going to take the offensive zone. Bergeron's going to have the puck down the left wall. Spins to get a body off of him. Whips it into the slot. McAvoy makes contact with it, but it's a little behind him. So it slows the puck. Gets in front of DeBrusque, who's battling in the slot. And DeBrusque just punches it with his stick to flick it past Ranta. It's 2-1. Five minutes of the second. Game on. You need the next one, though. And about five minutes later, it's five minutes of perimeter play. No one has any real chances. And then Freddie, Freddie gets a chance. We're going into the offensive zone. It's a clever pass. It's a bad line change. Freddie has a chance to the high slot. Not a great scoring chance, but get it on net. He hits the post and it rings out. Okay, I'm not mad at Freddie about that. But transition back the other way. And this is is just a whole fucking lot of puck watching. It's so much puck watching. Puck gets sent in deep. 
Tara Vinen ends up with it on the left wall after it wraps around the boards. He throws it into the slot because Domi is uncovered. There's four Bruins there. Four boards just standing in front of Swayman. Coyle and Smith have a chance to intercept this pass, but there's a wide open lane. I'm not sure who I'm maddest at. And Freddie didn't back check. And so here we go with Domi, who's crossing into the inner... Ugh! Crossing into the slot, buries it past Swayman. Swayman doesn't have a chance. It's 3-1. Halfway through the second. Halfway through the game. To those of you who are like, we should have picked up Domi, man. We should have gotten Domi. I didn't want Domi. I didn't want Domi at the trade deadline. I know they picked him up. And he had a great one game for them in this series. Good for him. Fucking who cares. I didn't want Domi. But again, scoring was our problem. And again, I don't, I don't want to go get on that tangent. But we needed to get somebody. And we didn't. And defensively, I thought we were pretty good this series. Just couldn't score. They only had the first line. Only had the first line. Fuck sake. Shortly after that, Pasta will be back on the top line. And Frederick, after that goal, did not see any more ice in the second period. None of it. He does come back a couple minutes into the third. I really kind of called this, guys. He did not have a great game six. No matter how you look at it, I didn't think he had a good game six. He was just a fresh body for a bit. Should have taken him back out for game seven. I think... I know that there's a hesitation to overthink and change up the lines. Mm -mm, I would have taken him out in a heartbeat. Third period is where those of you who are mad at the refs are going to be most mad. I mean, you could argue in the first four minutes of this period, we deserved four minutes of power play time. I mean, mad scramble in front of Ranta basically to start it. And Smith, Brendan Smith, right after elbowing Pasta in the head, is down in front of Ranta with the puck in front of him and grabs the puck and pulls it under him. That is a blatant delay of game on a scoring chance for the Bruins. But it goes non-call. And then Smith is going to get away with a trip. Our Smith. And later on in the period, McAvoy gets under Shea's foot. And that looks kind of like a slew foot to me. So that goes uncalled as well. Like, again, I'm not saying it's just one-sided refereeing. Because although the first period absolutely was, the other... The other two periods, they just let it go. But it kind of favors a team that's up 3-1 when you're not calling shit on them. Not the rest's fault. Kane still outplayed us. There's nothing you can do about it. But God, what a frustrating sequence. And I understand why the complaints are there. 9.30 left. We're down 3-1. You need something. Anything. And Smith and Coyle get a two-on-one. Hard pass to Coyle. Coyle has a wide open net. Puck is on edge. Bounces over the stick. I don't know how much I blame Coyle for that. Like, that just happens sometimes. It really does. Uh, hard to handle those bouncing pucks. But you want to talk about the universe conspiring against us? Like, that was it. That was probably the game. That's probably the moment where I went, all right, I still believe, but that would have changed everything because we're still down by two. We are going to get another power play, 627 left. It is a Brendan Smith delay of game over the glass penalty. It was only called because they literally had to. Like, you don't have a choice to not call that unless you literally want everyone going, yeah, you're cheating. So they call that. Our power play has no juice whatsoever. Uh, don't even really get a scoring chance. Three minutes left. Stahl has a wraparound chance on Swayman. I think it went in the net, honestly. They don't call it a goal in the moment. It looked like Swayman got his pad there. On the reviews, you can't tell if it crossed the line. To me, logically, it looks like there's enough space there for it to have crossed the line, but you need you need it to be defined and all that stuff. So the call on the ice stands, no goal. We are going to go to six on five. 20 seconds left. We finally get a good bounce. It's a shot from the point that takes a deflection that gets to Pasta, who has a wide open. It's basically exactly what happened with the Domi stuff, uh, the Domi goal, uh, the, the second of the game. Bounces directly to his stick, and he has a wide open net. 3-2 with 21.3 seconds or something like that left. We uh, do get another chance. <laughs> Mad scramble in front of Ranta. Everyone's swiping at the puck. Just can't get a Bruins stick on it. And that's a season. That's a season, man. Oh, I love this team. I really do. I love this team so much. I'm just so... I know a lot of you come to this channel to feel better, right? To feel optimism and enjoyment of the game and all this stuff but the one thing i'm never going to have this channel be is disingenuous 
I'm never going to lie to you about stuff. Yeah, sometimes I try to get my energy up so that I'm more positive because I want that to be what the channel's about. But fuck, guys, I'm disheveled. I'm sad. I'm sad. And I'm just not going to lie to anybody about that. But let's talk about some game notes, and these are kind of serious notes, too. The bottom six got caved. Just absolutely caved. Third line, Freddy's been terrible. I, you gotta really, you've got to really look at this team. And if we go into the offseason, I don't care if the Canes win the fucking cup. If we go into the offseason going, oh, we are one win away from, from moving on to the second round, you're not going to do what you need to do. Is it blow it up? No. Bergeron's coming back. We need to get a little more scoring down the lineup. Just a little bit. I'm still saying you trade DeBrusque. We can have a conversation about that. I'm saying you find someone who might be interested in Felino. Uh, Lazar's gone. You put Steen up there. Hopefully he has a pretty good season. Like you hope that internally you have some guys. And Lee Sell, fuck it, man. You look great, kid. Welcome to the team. If he doesn't make the Bruins next year, at least midway through the season, I'm going to be fucking amazed. Because this team needs some scoring, man. Holy shit. Holy shit. The series came down to not being able to solve the matchups. But I don't think I'm putting that on Cassidy. I've been very open about when it's time to criticize Cassidy. And when it comes to this series, I don't know if I have that many criticisms. I have things I would have done differently as an armchair coach who's sitting fucking... 300 miles away from the... I don't even know how far I am from Boston right now. I'm far away. I'm not on the ice. If you watched me skate, you'd wonder why you listened to the channel. I shouldn't admit that. I'm not telling Cassidy jack shit. Guy knows more about hockey than I ever will. Here's the thing. I would have done things differently. Just saying. That's just my personal opinion. I'm a fan. I get to say that. I don't put a lot of this on Cassidy's head, though. Not being able to solve those matchups... You can't literally just change all of your lines and hope chemistry forms over for, over two games, three games, right? You, you just can't. You have to stick with the lines that worked and make small tweaks and hope you can exploit a matchup when you can. After icings, you throw out the Bergeron line because you can get them away from the stall line. You do what you can to shut down the Ajo line, which the Ajo line did not have a good series, it's, well, particularly Ajo, I would say. That's stuff that I thought he did well. But at the end of the day... We didn't have the personnel that could put the puck in the net. I mean, I don't know. I don't want to overanalyze this. Like, what am I supposed to say? Oh, we had a bunch of scorers. They all just went cold at the same time. Bullshit. Bullshit. I'm a big Nosek guy. Nosek didn't look good. I'm a, I'm a big Coil guy. Coil actually was solid, I thought. I'm a huge Smith guy, and Smith disappeared. I'm bummed. Smith is not a guy I get rid of, by the way. Did I, do I think he had a bad series? Absolutely. Smith is invaluable. Invaluable. Also, I'll reiterate, I don't even know if I said this in the beginning of the video. This is the last note. Guys, I saw a lot of stuff about the effort of this game. I just think we got beat. I don't think it was a poor effort. I just thought we lost. They had a better team. They kept us out of the scoring lanes. I do not think this was effort. I think we got outplayed and we couldn't solve the matchups. I saw a lot of effort from Bergeron, Lindholm, McAvoy, Marchand. A lot. DeBrus was getting in dirty areas. Forbort was fighting hard. Clifton kind of disappeared, but I didn't really... If I'm expecting Clifton to, to win us a game seven, then what the fuck am I doing anyway? I thought there was effort. I thought our bottom six got caved. Our first line got mostly shut down. And our second line didn't have enough juice to beat the Ajo line. Boom. Series. Series. But hey, I fucking love this team. I am so thankful for everyone who watches this channel. I'm so appreciative. We came within 42 subs. 42 of reaching our goal. It was a massive goal. A thousand? This time last year, we were at less than 200, I think. It was a massive goal. Thank you, everyone who's been supporting. It's, it's just, I can't even explain how awesome, awesome, awesome it is for me, personally. Just to see all the comments and everything. Just, it's awesome. So, thank you so much. And as usual, Go Beans!